In just a few days, the people of Germany will elect a new government. But the country is restless right now. It's clear that over the last few years, politicians have failed to tackle a number of major problems. What direction will Germany take after this election? Will optimism return or will things just stay the same? For this report, we talked to people across the country who were concerned about this situation. It's awful. Down there you can see where some houses used to stand. Next to that brown house there were five others. Here's the front door of a house that was washed away. The flood water just flattened those houses. It's a miracle no one was killed. All this with no warning. The fire station was flooded, so they couldn't turn on the siren. Climate change has come to Germany. It's no longer something far away. It's right here, right now. In mid-July, Western Germany was hit by massive floods, caused by heavy rain. More than 180 people died. Some are still listed as missing. The town of Blessum, near Cologne, was hard hit. A mudslide created a huge crater there. Climate change has become a big election campaign issue. Raphael Rill suddenly was without a home. His old apartment is gone. It's a shame that I had to leave, but the floods just destroyed the whole area. <laughs> Before the water got too high, Verena Bachus packed her kids and pets into the family's car and drove to safety. They hope to move back home soon, but they're still a bit nervous. It's still our home, but it just isn't safe anymore. And the whole place is a mess. I don't understand much about politics. The politicians talk a lot, but they don't deliver. I don't pay attention to them anymore. I've started studying the issues myself and the policies of the individual parties, particularly when it comes to climate change. As far as I'm concerned, politicians hadn't thought much about climate change in the last few years. And now we're paying the price for that, with catastrophes like big floods. You shouldn't notice something after it's already too late. Thomas Erndl is a Bundestag MP from the Bavarian town of Deggendorf. Erndl is a member of the conservative CSU party that has been a part of the government coalition for the past 16 years. Why aren't you doing anything about climate change? What do you mean? We've done a lot over the years. We're running out of time for my generation and my grandchildren's. I'm not convinced that starting a revolution is the right solution. We need a solution for everyone. You can't have a small group just rushing off and making decisions that a majority of the people don't support. Degendorf was hit hard by floods in 2013. 
thousands of people were forced to leave their homes. Back then, few people blamed climate change for the flooding. Now, a growing majority in Germany agree that something must be done. But what? And at what price? If, for example, we make air travel more expensive, that would cause problems. Many people can now afford to fly, and that's a great achievement. More people now travel by air than they did in the 1950s, and I don't see any way that we can give that up. That kind of talk makes Pierre Sissel angry. Sissel is a 22-year-old student from Erfurt and he's involved in the Fridays for Future climate movement. Sissel and other members of the organization say that the older generation is squandering the future, so they plan to hold a big demonstration on the Friday before the election. We're racing towards the abyss with a smile on our faces. The problem is that there's no lobby for our generation. The interests of older people in Germany are represented better in Parliament than our interests are. Erfurt, in the east of Germany. A city whose age demographic follows the national average. The majority of voters are over 50. Young people are a minority. So what can they do to fight climate change? Pierre Sissel says that he has no plans to join a political party. It's up to my generation to put pressure on society from outside of the system, because political parties move so slowly. You have to work your way up in the party, putting up posters, speaking with organizations, and a lot of young people find that frustrating. Hipatun Nur Kausa doesn't let it get to her. She joined the SPD party at the age of 16. Now, five years later, she serves on the Offenbach City Council. It's all ready to go. Here are your flyers. How am I supposed to get this all downstairs? Carry it. Seriously. Kausa and her young Social Democrat colleagues want to see more members of their generation serving on the city council. Today, they'll be hitting the streets to try to make that happen. So the plan is to take our good moods down to the riverside. We're fighting to make our voices heard. We don't want just older people to make decisions that affect us. We want to take things into our own hands. This is our future. I think if we lowered the voting age from 18 to 16, things could change quite a bit. In the shadows of the skyline of Frankfurt lies Hibber Krause's home in the town of Offenbach. More than 150 different nationalities live in Krause's constituency, and many of the new immigrants are young. That's not the case for the city council. Here in my district, where the majority is diverse, we have a city council that isn't. Our parliament is mostly old, white and male, even though the local population is young and ethnically diverse. But many cannot vote because that would mean giving up their current passports in order to do so. I grew up here in Offenbach, but I can't vote because I only have a Turkish passport. Many here want to vote, but they can't because they're not citizens. Hi! 
That's the case for about 10 million people in Germany, even though they live here, work here and pay taxes here. And those immigrants who can vote are often ignored. The people from my community, those that come from immigrant families, are open to talking about politics. But a lot of the politicians don't want to meet them. They only meet with very specific groups of people. They go where they think these people definitely have the right to vote, usually white people. They ignore people who look like me. How about some chocolate with chili? It's spicy. No thanks. This food bank in Duisburg feeds about 2,000 people a week, including low-income retirees, unemployed people and immigrants. Here they can get donated food that would normally be hard to come by. Duisburg is located in western Germany and used to be an important centre for coal and steel production. But many who worked in those industries have lost their jobs. Today, nearly 70% of those who live in the Hochfeld district receive government assistance. Most people here don't vote. In the last local election, the turnout was just 20%. I have no idea who I should vote for. The politicians don't do anything anyway, whether they're SPD or CDU. Nobody talks to average people. The politicians decide for themselves what they want, and that's disappointing. I used to vote all the time, but what good does it do? You just end up paying more, so I stopped voting. Günter Spikowski has been running the food bank for 13 years. Poor people have other things to worry about besides elections. On top of that, I think the gap between politicians and people is getting bigger. If you're trying to put food on the table, you're not going to pay much attention to what the politicians are doing way over there in Berlin. Workers at the food bank say that the number of people who feel disconnected from society is rising. Will people work to change this situation? Should politicians be worried about angry poor people? I think that more and more people are frustrated. But I don't think that things will change much. The poor just aren't able to focus on these things. If you're worried about where your next meal is coming from, you're not going to start a revolution. Many people in Germany today are anxious about their future. The problems that the country faces are obvious. But why are these problems not being addressed? Why does it take so long to get anything done? And who should people vote for? We return to Degendorf in Bavaria. Thomas Andel is traveling around his constituency. In Degendorf, his party lost a huge number of voters to the right-wing populist AFD in the last federal election. Andel wants to win those people back. In the village of Igensbach, he meets with a group of military veterans. Where did you serve? In Freyland. I was drafted for basic military service. And after basic training, I signed up for reserve officer training. I don't care about politics. Why? So. Well, when you listen to politicians and watch the news, it just gives you ulcers. 
Our politicians are incompetent, no matter what party they belong to. But I'm a politician. <laughs> Come on, you know I'm right. Look, as a person, I think you're great, but I don't care about politics or parties. And that's fine. <laughs> Andal has to attract a wide range of voters. That's not easy when some believe that the CSU is not conservative enough. Most of us here are pretty conservative. We don't necessarily want to vote for the AFD, but things are moving too far to the left. And there's no party that represents middle-of-the-road voters. I think that the refugee crisis was a big challenge for this region. At the same time, the AFD did a good job of focusing their strategy to attract voters who'd never gotten involved in politics before. In 2015, nearly one million refugees arrived in Germany. A large reception facility was built in Degendorf. For more than 80,000 refugees, it was their first home in Germany. Interpreter Nermin Janetska was among those who helped the refugees get used to the new surroundings. The facility is closed off by a big fence. The fence helps to keep the refugees safe. There are a lot of AFD supporters here in Degendorf, and there's quite a bit of xenophobia. So in theory, it's here to protect them. At the same time, the fence keeps the refugees inside the compound. There's no chance for them to leave. None at all. Yeah, it's not easy. You know, it's very difficult here, so much. Why? Understand? Because why is it difficult? Because here, you know, no, you cannot, no freedom. Just inside the camp. Many people are mental, are sick because of long time stay for one place without no job, no where to go. All of them, they are racist. They are racist. You want to speak to someone, nobody listening to you, you understand? It makes me feel so much depressed every time. Hibber Kauser's parents arrived in Germany as refugees. The family had to leave their home in Pakistan because they were persecuted for their religion. Hiba herself was born in a refugee shelter in eastern Germany. My parents were completely on their own. They couldn't speak the language here. They were placed in a refugee facility in a forest in the state of Brandenburg. There were some neo-Nazis around there too. It was terrible for them, just awful. When I talk to my mom about those days living in the home, we always call the refugee center a home. That was the first German word that my parents heard. Someone said, you're going to a home now. She talks about it being a very scary time for them. So I can understand how life in a place like that can affect people over time. Whenever it rains now, I look at the flood hazard map, even in the middle of the night. And when a helicopter flies over, I ask myself, what's it doing? Our home is no longer safe.
The damage from the flooding is enormous. At the same time, the flood victims have experienced unprecedented support, compassion and friendship from members of the local community. Something that many have forgotten in recent years. The feeling of community is simply amazing. People from all over came to help us. And on top of that, the whole village came together. Before the flooding, I'd only met a few of those people, if at all. This is what community is. Are average people perhaps one step ahead of the politics? What can and what can't politicians achieve? We've come back to Thomas Andel's constituency. Berlin is 600 kilometers from here. But for many, the nation's capital is a world away, especially when it comes to internet access. For business owners in the region, this is a huge problem. We've been arguing about this situation for years, and the internet antenna still doesn't work. I read in the paper that we're supposed to have a 5G network in place by 2025, but here we still don't have decent internet service. Why not? There are still some rough patches to work on, and these can take a lot of work to fix. In many communities, people get upset if you try to put up a cell tower. And there are some technical problems that are unique to Germany. Infrastructure is important, and we still have some catching up to do. Without high-speed internet access, Pierre Zissel wouldn't have been able to continue taking university classes during the pandemic. He hasn't been in a classroom for three semesters now, but COVID-19 has made his life difficult in other ways. I lost my part-time job at a restaurant. I know a lot of students who also lost part-time work. And they had to either drop out of school or take some time off. It seems to me that a lot of schools have not put in air filters and have not developed the proper resources for providing online courses. We're dealing with two groups here. One says it's crazy, you can't just lock the students out of schools. They need the social contact. The other group says that it's crazy to open the schools. Students can get infected and bring the virus home to their families. And these two groups aren't coming together anytime soon. Hi. The pandemic also had serious consequences for five-year-old Nasip and his father. They're getting help at this counselling centre in Offenbach. Emin Yarmak is a single parent. The double responsibilities of work and childcare overloaded him to the point where he lost his job. Ermin says councillor Mehmet Hamanji helped him to get through some hard times. Can I ask you a question? Do you have something like this? What is that? A cap. Maybe this one. Exactly. 
pear on top. Exactly, a pear on top. Mehmet says that it's a terrible shame that the government spends so little on education. Key reforms are being delayed due in part to the pandemic. Children like Nasip don't have a lot of time. It may take five years to develop inclusive kindergartens for everyone and to provide education specialists. So Nasip and his father will just have to wait. For me, my wish would be that the government react more quickly so that we get the funding we need sooner. Hiba Kausa hasn't been in politics for long, but she knows that she has to push her party, the SPD, to get things done. We're impatient because we're running out of time. It is possible to make big decisions if you really want to. Determination is important. We have to always keep trying and stay impatient. Many people hope that this month's election will bring about change and that a number of serious problems will finally be addressed. Sometimes, though, waiting too long can have drastic consequences. What sort of future do Germans want for their country? Over the next 10 years, I'd like to see Germany take more responsibility in regards to climate change. I'd like my kids to live in a country that's safe. I'd like to live in a country and a region that makes the right decisions for the future, which offers perspective for young people. My ideal country would be one that's incredibly diverse. I want to see lots of new faces and hear lots of new personal stories. In 10 years, I'd like to live in a country where young people don't have to protest on the streets for climate justice. Just a country that offers you a good home without having to worry about how things are somewhere else. Just a good place to live. 